Hi everyone, and welcome back. In today's meta build, we have one of the most popular and sort of combos for the Hunter to date, and that is the Wish Ender and Oathkeeper setup. The following exotic has received quite a huge upgrade to their power selves, and now when combined together, allows players to not only deal significantly more damage in endgame content, but also provides a new meta build that you can add to your collection. There is a lot to build with the two exotics now, and how you go about it, it can never go wrong. So, here's my take on the version that provides both survivability and significantly more damage than most solar builds can handle. To start, you're going to want to have Vanishing Stab where dodging makes you invisible. Then you'll want Stylus Executioner where defeating a weakened, volatile, or suppressed effect target grants you true sight and invisibility. As the build will have a mixture of survival and team support, the best way to do this is to simply build into the one aspect hunters are best at when using them in in-game content, going invisible. You do not need anything else out of this section, as the main strength of the build will be coming from the exotics and fragments being used. However, Trapper's Ambush aspect can be used as well if you plan to use invis a lot more often for set encounters. Fragments used are Echo Obscurity, where doing a finish on a target makes you invisible. Echo Remnants, where your lingering grenade durations are extended. Echo of Persistence, where void buffs applied to you are increased. And Echo of Undermining, where your grenades apply a 15% debuff to targets. The Echo of Obscurity and Persistence are going to vastly enhance our consistent abilities that will be used for either extra damage or just extra survival, while Echo of Remnants and Undermining are going to make our grenade choice more lethal in the long run. This is what I would run as the go-to fragments when playing Grandmasters as you want to be able to deal significantly more damage to your targets compared to your teammates, but in case of an emergency you also want to be freely available to get your teammates that are in a bad spot. Echo of Cessation is also a good fragment to use but risky as pulling it off will require you to go invisible and get a finish on a target while surrounded. Depending on your playstyle, you can either play really aggressive or casual as the build does allow you to switch it up here and there. For the mods and stats section, having high mobility stat along with discipline and resilience will be the play here. Having a tier 8 resilience is going to help massively with reducing income and damage and also making it easier for you to navigate the tough terrain you may face. I have added the Font of Endurance mod for the plus 30 toward my current stat and although this is a bit of an overkill on my end, this is mainly because I cannot get my resilience level down to tier 7 without sacrificing other parts of my stats. Tier 7 is ideal and if possible, try and achieve that instead. Mobility at tier 7 is going to be hand in hand support with our dodge ability so we can go invisible instantly. Now the only thing I have here to help is the focus strike mod which will grant us ability energy back on melee damage by 20%. We won't be using MIDI a lot over the time, but it will be helpful when we do need that extra small boost to the current stat. Discipline will be at tier 7, but actually it will be tier 10 because of the Font of Focus mod grant us a plus 30 to our stat. I would recommend you do the same as it is easy to achieve for a lot of players and you don't need to heavily invest into getting good armour with good armour spikes rolls just for the cause alone. If you have the armor and can achieve a tier 10 without the mod, then go ahead and add on the grenade kickstart mod instead since that will provide a better usage over time. With the stat at tier 10, the Echo of Undermining and Remnants effect will be more potent for players and allow you to spam your grenades more often when you need them most. Do remember that each grenade type have a different cooldown rate to each other, so be sure to pick and choose what is most appropriate before entering challenging content. Now, for armor charges and such, we have charged up to increase how many armor charges we can carry by plus one, and then having connect siphon and fire power will help with getting orbs of power much faster while playing. I also added the powerful friends mod, so each time we become charged, our team will be charged as well, which is great when you want to coordinate abilities, and then add the powerful attraction mod, so each time we use our class ability, I can collect orbs of power within my radius. All of this will ultimately lead back to our Kinetic Weapon Surge mod times 2 for the 17% damage boost for our weapon, as well as Oathkeeper's extra 150% damage boost when probably active. I do also have the Arc Weapon Siphon mod for a 7% Arc Weapon buff, but this is dependable on personal weapons of choice. And then lastly, Time Dilation mod will extend the duration of all time based mods we have to around an extra 15 seconds extra time. Now lastly, weapons being used will be the Wish Ender Bow, which I must say is quite fantastic to use now and is definitely a must have. 
the following received a buff quite a while back as it didn't offer very much to the table except for its ability to see through walls. Once the buff came through, the following became one of the best kind of exotics to equip that did its part really well while also being able to take over from what Arbalis was able to do. Not only can it break down champion shields in one full charge, but can also eat through elemental shields in around two full charges for GMs, while also doing very high damage against bosses and mini bosses. Now, if you haven't got the build, but you're new to the game and you do want to give this build a try, then look out for the following legendary weapons. Under your skin, Tripwire Canary, Whispering Slab, and the Fell Taradil. The first three can be gotten from Xur or Banshee on the weekly to daily rotation, while Fell can be gotten from a Witch Queen activity. Fantastic in design, the Earth Keeper Wish and the Bow combo is truly what I would call a needed upgrade to his past form. Wish Ender, when it was first released, had limited usage and wasn't so great for PvE or PvP content, unless you wanted to use it to see targets behind the wall. While Earth Keepers was simple and allowed users to hold bows for indefinite amount of times. Both of these came a long way from the past forms and now, after a recent buff, have gained popularity to the point of being common in 90% of endgame content. The sheer firepower they provide allows players to use them to take out a wide number of enemies with little effort, and the added on bonus of them being used in any subclass allows easier customization without being limited down to what you can and can't do. This brings us to the subclass choices as we have many ways to go about this. We can go solo for more damage boost and healing via radiant effects, or we can go stasis and get increased kinetic damage against stasis targets easier. Then you have strand where several effects can apply additional damage on top of what you have, and arc has some usages here and there. But the ultimate one to pick here is going to be Void with his fantastic set of survivable abilities. With the ability to debuff targets easily by a 15%, to also allowing us to go in vis when needed most, the following enhances our setup to the point of making it a lot of end game to Grandmaster content an absolute breeze. And all of this at the end of the day is down to just two items controlling the build. Nothing more, nothing less. Earth Keepers providing that 150% damage buff on max charge, Wish Gender doing triple damage, and Void providing us with survivability and debuffs makes the following a great meta build to add to your current collection. And the great thing about this though, this isn't even all it can achieve. There is so much more you can do with this combo, you just need to think outside the box. And although some people would say Earth Keepers aren't really that amazing to have the exotic, is still viable to use as of now. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub bar here. I'll leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.